Hi, it's Ross here again, and this is the end goal of this series. If you've been following along, we've got to the point where the terrain is looking pretty good, but under the water here is totally bare. What we want is something that looks like this. So in this video, we're going to look at how we can use Procedural World's Jenna asset to populate this bed with planting like this. So Jenna is not a particularly cheap asset, but it is an excellent asset. It provides very fine control over semi-procedural placement of all sorts of assets, not just vegetation as we're doing here, but things like buildings with various outbuildings that go with it, etc. Um, so do go ahead and grab this asset if you're interested, but be aware that the version I'm using in this video is actually a beta of the next release of Jaina. Um, it's very close to release at the point I'm recording this, so hopefully it will already have been updated in the store, but if not, it's going to be a free upgrade and everything I do in this video is possible in the current version, so just go ahead and upgrade in the near future. So what I've done is I've created a Jenna spawner here and down at the bottom here you can add prefabs or speed trees or grass and so on into this space. I have some underwater plants. These come from your queue. Um, links in the description, of course. And these uh, plants are, although they're seaweeds, they're going to look fine inside of this uh, lake environment that we have. So there's a lots of tall ones like that, and then there's a whole load of small ones that are kind of grasses. So I'm going to start off with the small ones down here. So go to my Jenna spawner lock that so that I can then select these over here and I'm going to drag those into the spawner and I get the choice of uh, dragging them in as either structure or individual items. Structure items um, they will spawn um, as a whole so all of them will spawn together and they'll keep their relative positions to one another that's not what i want in this case though um, that would be used for buildings with uh, like fences and outbuildings with it and so on um, what i actually want here is individual items so those have now been imported here as spawn prototypes so how do we decide where they go well we have this spawning criteria and placement criteria here and that will define exactly where they're going to be placed and spawned so the placement style is organic meaning it's a bit like a, a, a how a plant would work it throws seed from itself uh, and then a new plant will grow in the new location i'm going to change the scale i don't want it to be quite as varied as the default there so now the scale is going to be between 0.8 and 1.2. The next thing we're going to look at is the spawn criteria. Uh, here we're going to say only spawn when you're not uh, when you're not going to overlap the bounds of another object. So we'll make sure that the space between each individual plant. And you have different ways of checking for the height. Uh, we're currently on mixed, and what mixed does is when I click over here, I can visualize if I click here need to select the spawner for this to work then I can see where it will spawn and in this case it's pretty flat so it's going to spawn within this region in this case within 30 meters of where I click if I reduce that down to just 0.1 of a meter and I click here you can see now it's only going to spawn in these two places because they happen to be within that uh, distance of where I height of where I clicked uh, if I increase it to say one meter and I click, you can see it's not going to go down into this um, dip here, but it will spawn at this because the height is similar over there. So you can create bands. Uh, if I do it over here, it'd be much more clear. You can see create a band of uh, vegetation going along that slope. Um, so what I want to do here is I want to um, actually change it to uh, min max. I don't want that range. So what this one will do is as long as the height is between these two points uh, or two heights, it will spawn. So I don't want them to spawn into the above the water. Uh, so I'm going to make it 49 meters. The water level is at 50 meters. And then we have the check slope. This is very similar. Here we're checking uh, to within 30 degrees of wherever I click. Again, I actually want to go to min max. And I'm going to say I don't want these on anything but a, a gentle slope. 
direction. So now when I click, you can see this slope is too steep, but over here we're okay. So that looks fairly good so far. So the final thing we want to look at is above here, which is the overview. Here we have a name, so let's give this a name as um, uh, short weeds. Spawn range is the size of this circle. Then I have throw distance. So remember we said that the spawn placement here is organic. Um, well, this is the distance each plant will throw its seed. So typically you'll get what about 1.9 meters difference between the seeds, the plants as they grow. And how many does it do throw out there? Well, that depends on your instances. So I'm going to change my instances. I'm going to want something between, uh, let's say, 35 and 100 each time I spawn. So I can visualize with shift click to see how it's going to come out. And this all looks pretty good to me. And then I can control click and it will actually spawn those items. And you see I'm getting a variety of different weeds in this area here. And I can spawn some more like that. And this is looking pretty good. OK, so that's looking OK at the moment. So next, I want to do some long weeds. So I'm going to create a new spawner. I need to lock this so that I can select over here. Ones through twos. Individual items. Uh, and the last one. OK. I want these to not conform to the slope. So I will can I can go in and individually unclick this box or I can say none should conform to the slope. And you see the C has disappeared from the top. If I click that again, the C comes back. And if you scan down, you'll see the C has disappeared on all of them now. So that's the conform to slope done. The other thing I want to do is I want these to be able to spawn on uh, steeper slopes. So they'll fill in where these other things haven't gone. Uh, so let's put that up to say 38 and a half degree. So if I now shift click, I have to have the spawner selected. And actually before I do that, I will rename. So it's green tall weeds, shift click. And that shows me where it will spawn. If I go and click on these slopes, I can see I can still spawn up there. Now, I've just realized I'm up to the top there. I was spawning up to one meter underneath the water. Uh, clearly, that's going to be too high for these because these are quite tall. So I need to reduce the spawn height to maybe 47.5. And now when I click over here, um, you can see it won't spawn in that very top bit. So let's do some spawning. Uh, we're not really showing enough. We're only spawning three. So don't want quite so many of these. But go five to maybe 24 will do. There we go. And here we're just going to go around and fill in some of the gaps that have uh, arisen. <laughs> Okay, that looks uh, looks pretty good for a few minutes work. Obviously, an artist would do a considerably better job than me, but that's good enough for me uh, at this point. Okay, so this is a view of where we will get to at the end of this video series. What we've just seen is how we can use Procedural Worlds' Jenna asset to place vegetation. It's also great for placing buildings and find control over where you're going to put um, objects in your scene. What we're going to do next is improve the terrain textures using a tool called Complete Terrain Shader. Uh, and our terrain will really start to liven up at this point. So enjoy the view. See you again soon.